tell you the moment that I lost trust in myself. I was home, and my boyfriend of two years was moving out. I didn't realize that my dog wasn't in the house. I didn't realize that the back gate was unlatched. I heard the tires squeal, the impact, and the cry. And as I went running into the street, I, I thought to myself, that's not my dog. This isn't happening. That is not my dog. But it was my dog. A dog I considered to be as close as a soulmate. His name was Happy Go Lucky, and Happy was just that. A jovial soul, playful, mischievous, just a big, big love. He was the only reason I got out of bed in the mornings after my divorce, and the only reason I would come home. He gave the best snuggles. He did this goofy little cockroach thing where he'd lay upside down. And he just always knew how to make me laugh. He was my dog, my soul dog. As I reached him in the street, I knelt down and I placed his head in my lap. Everything around me slowed down, and the street just quieted. I didn't feel any judgment from him. I didn't feel any anger. I just felt him let go at my presence. I felt the pain leave his body, and I watched him take his last breath. Even in that horrible chaos, there was this moment of peace for us as I held him at the end. My home was abruptly silent. Extensive grief came with opening a door that used to have a light and a dog on the other side. Guilt that I should have kept him safe consumed me. I drove through that intersection every single day, and I just shoved that memory so far down, I stopped seeing it. I just packaged my pain away. I thought I would never be able to bring another dog home. But in that quiet emptiness that is a house without a dog, I began to think that I knew one of the worst things that could happen to a dog. I could surely keep the next one safe. I adopted a dog named Excel, and I trusted no one with my dog. I barely trusted myself. I walked him with two leashes when I first got him. It was not a joke. Um, I, I, I tore down my old fence, built a new one, six feet tall, padlocks on every gate. I taught all my friends and family to have the same paranoia that I felt around open doors. It wasn't until Excel was diagnosed with cancer that I realized how very little I trusted myself and how in all my efforts to keep him safe, I still had no control. Life, in all its grandeur and cruelty, it happens anyway. Excel, as was happy, an X-Racing Greyhound, I knew the minute I met a greyhound that they were the dog for me. Just big couch potatoes, lanky legs, ginormous hearts. I was first introduced to them in high school, and I couldn't wait to be adult enough to have a house, a yard, and a greyhound. Now, happy he flunked out of racing. He wasn't fast enough to professionally run, but Excel, Excel descended from champions. He excelled at racing. He ran on a track in Iowa for three years. They ran him 53 times, and track notes indicate he won someone $10,875. In researching his background, his race notes towards the end indicated that he fell far turn. His next races were tired, badly stretched, surrendered lead, steady decline, first, to last. Now, track dogs can no longer run. They're bred if they're champions. They're adopted out or they're euthanized. Excel was lucky. He excelled 
at racing, and he also excelled at racing into people's hearts. He was placed in a prison program where inmates care for greyhounds and adjust them to life outside the track. This particular program was in Colorado, and the bonds that inmates create with dogs is something beautiful. This particular inmate handmade Excel's collar, and I was told it was a really tearful goodbye. Excel was in my care for about five years when I noticed a lump at the end of one of his ribs. I didn't think much of it at first. It felt like a, a bone spur or like a calcified bit of bone, but then it began to grow fast. A biopsy concluded that it was osteosarcoma, a really invasive and incredibly painful bone cancer. Osteosarcoma attacks quietly and quickly. It gets into the bone. Healthy bone cells start to attack it and pop it up. And then the cancer disintegrates the bone, turning it into mush. It's theorized that ex-racing greyhounds have higher instances of osteosarcoma because of overbreeding practices or injury they sustain on the track. Excel came from a champion dog, who came from a champion dog. Between these two champions, they were used to produce 23,000 puppies. Excel was one of 23,000 puppies from two champion greyhounds. Now, bone cancer doesn't need much. It can spark in tiny fractures of the bone, it can replicate across a highly bred genetic line. By the time I found out it was osteosarcoma, it had spread into Excel's limb from his rib. He could barely walk and was exhibiting all signs of extreme pain, panting, restlessness, leg licking, confusion. Removing the rib wasn't advised, nor was amputation. It was too late to stop the cancer spread. Vets prescribed a codeine-type pain reliever and estimated he had, at best, three months to live. I didn't even think that he had three weeks. I took him home and I slept next to him as his body just pulsed in pain. I could feel the cancer moving through him. I did what I imagine many people do in times of desperation. I turned to Google. Now, I found, as you can imagine, a ton of overwhelming information. But I also found some pretty helpful options for treating cancer in canines naturally. Raw food diets, using turmeric root, mushroom powder, vitamin D, SEF tonic, cannabidol, sylvesterol, frankincense. I was so energized for the first time since he got sick. I consulted a holistic veterinarian and we immediately changed his food. All processed dog food was removed, replaced with lean meats and dark green vegetables. Anything that would feed the tumor was eradicated from his diet. No grains of any kind or sugars, except those in select produce. It was a science diet of my own concoction. I also chose to give Excel cannabis oil, CBDs. The CBDs are sort of like pot without the fun. It's a non-psychotropic uh, extracted from cannabis. Helps with pain management, uh, anxiety, and also in some studies has been shown to attack cancer cell growth. I decided to treat the cancer, not turn off the symptoms. Within a few days, his mobility did improve, and the signs of pain I've been witnessing were gone. I was so excited. I, did, I didn't know it was going to work. Uh, I started talking about it on social media, and I received so much generosity and kindness and connection from people. When I asked hunters to donate old meat to help me feed Excel, friends and strangers alike filled my freezer with hunted game. Friends gave up their time and came by just to help me medicate and feed him or sit with us. And one friend even helped me sew his Halloween costume. <laughs> he might help us a very hot in class. <laughs> um, one month after Excel's diagnosis, we celebrated his ninth birthday. We celebrated like a champ. There was pretty girls everywhere. Three months in, I spoke with his uh, holistic vet. She inspected the tumors on his rib 
and in his leg. And she was very surprised that the cancer hadn't spread more. At the rate in which osteosarcoma um, works in the bone, she expected much more expansion. Something is working, she said. At four months, I talked to his traditional vet. She said he defied odds. She was putting down dogs with the same cancer within weeks, not months. At five months, the first snow of the year descended. It was big, beautiful snow, the kind of snow that makes you excited with its purity and its lightness. And I watched Excel outside. He was playful, curious, just like any other dog might be on the first snowy day of the year. But suddenly, he cried out. He stopped all movement, holding his leg above the snow, and I had that same visceral reaction in my body when I heard happy after being struck in the street. I lunged outside and I grabbed my dog, hollering, I carried him inside and I placed him down. I thought, this is it, this is the end, it's over, he's broken the leg. And I, I put my hands around the tumor, and it wasn't broken, thank God. And he stopped crying, and he didn't flinch. He just stood there, looking shocked. In the purity of that snow, he forgot he was sick, and I remembered just how sick he was. As we watch our loved ones die, there are perfect days, pain-free days. And then there are gut-kicking days, days when we question everything. Some said that I would know, I would see it in his eyes, and I would just know that it was time. But as the cancer progressed, I received all kinds of looks. As he declined, I saw my fears in his once bright eyes, my years in his gray muzzle, my days in each step. I thought I could keep him safe, keep him out of pain, keep him hungry, keep him walking. Cancer removed any illusion that I had of control. After that snowy incident, Excel stopped using the leg with the tumor. He got around pretty good for a dog that was only using three legs, and I thought, if he's going to go out, he's going to go out in style. So I ramped up those CBDs, I gave him all the meat he could eat, and it was a hard decision, but I decided that I would give him the codeine from the vet. I didn't, I didn't want to dull him at the end of his life. I didn't want to mask the pain, but I knew it was too much. And wouldn't you know that tumor? The swelling went down. He started walking again using all of his legs, and six months into this experimental treatment, Excel is with us. He's still here. I attribute his life to the food that he eats and the amount that he's loved. Now some might think, Medicating cancer with food is a great risk. But to me, the risk was greater not to. There wasn't a body of research that told me all of these choices I made were the right choices. I improvised. I ex experimented. I trusted my gut. And I did my own research. I wanted to be able to wrap this up and present it in a really neat way. But I can't give you a conclusion because this story isn't finished. There isn't a script for Excel because every time I memorized a line the way I felt about it changed or the circumstances changed. I am improvising in the moment. I am learning to trust myself unscripted. When Happy died, I took all that pain from the street and I carried it with me. I viewed my sadness as a burden, something that I should pack away, something that I should hide. When I finally acknowledged that pain, when I sat with it, I allowed it to affect me. I became aware that I contained the power to mend heartbreak. I contained forgiveness. I began to understand that my pain doesn't define me. What I do with it does. 
how I get up, how I go on, how I love and how I trust after something beautiful is gone. The moment that we meet dogs, they transform us. We want more of what they have, this strength of heart and unconditional love that they contain. If we allow them into our hearts, we create a pack. We learn to trust one another through an uncommon language. Love becomes our shared words. In dogs, the connection is immediate and simple. They trust us to have their backs and take care of them. We all have this fundamental need for connection. We all want to know that we have a safe place to land. We all want to know that there's somebody out there for us. My pack taught me that life isn't about the solo journey. Together, we co-evolve, and we learn to love fiercely, all the while knowing that with fierce love comes incredible loss. Excel's cancer has taught me to slow down. And I do believe that dogs are here to teach us to love again and again and again. I've learned to be in the moment because it's the only moment that I have. Excel lives every day in this moment, helping me forget how little time we have. Dogs live in days, but love in lifetimes. God's now. Time is meaningless. Love is infinite. Thank you very much.